want to switch gears a little bit towards signaling pathways, and I will briefly um, introduce why I would do that. I'm not going to uh, repeat myeloma genomics because that was uh, now nicely introduced by Avi and Nikhil and others, uh, previous speakers here. Um, the main point of uh, this, uh, why, I, why I put up this slide, is that, as, as you have heard, we have many mutations per patient. We have rel relatively few mutations that are recurrently um, coming up in patients, even re relatively few recurrently mutated genes. Um, however, you can try to, gr to group the present mutations that have been uh, identified in, in more than 1,000 patients so far into some functional kind of elements, functional networks, so-called uh, oncogenic signaling pathways, for example, like uh, already mentioned, MAP kinase signaling, uh, mostly driven, of course, by the RAS mutation, RAF mutations, maybe nf kappa b pathway, and so on. So um, we thought it might be worthwhile to look into the, or come, coming from the other end, so not from the genetic point of view, but more from the biological, biochemical uh, point of view. So what, what signaling pathways in myeloma are actually activated and how do they change over time, over the uh, course of the disease, and might that be a valuable target for, for therapy in myeloma? So uh, this is a, an overview of the program. So we uh, basically checked for activation of signaling pathways, as I said, in uh, several stages of myeloma. We associated the, uh, the outcome or the findings in this, of this part with clinical parameters, uh, such as um, clinical parameters in terms of um, uh, prognostic factors and survival analysis. Um, we, we started now to correlate that with molecular bay, uh, data, as we just have heard, and as I said, do that on a longitudinal basis. Very. Um, yeah. So this is basically the sample set that we have started with. Um, we had more than 30 patients smoldering myeloma, and just to allude to the just uh, recent discussion here a few minutes ago, uh, these were all smoldering myeloma, um, not only defined uh, up to, uh, according to IMWG, but also to the clinical course, so they had, had all a uh, follow-up of more than two years without any change of the, of the disease parameters at least. Newly diagnosed myeloma, roughly 200 patients just uh, newly diagnosed, and relapsed refractory myeloma, at least refractory to an imid and an PI, uh, roughly 150 patients here. And we had an independent clinical validation cohort from clinical trials of our study group, about 80 patients. Um, so to start off with, uh, to put it uh, simple for the first part is we said, okay, ras raf mutations are the most frequent mutations in uh, myeloma. So that might be an interesting start to look at do ras raf mutations actually confer activation of the downstream pathway, as uh, Nikhil just alluded to, so to, to the ras raf erg pathway, as uh, we have possibilities, we have the drugs to inhibit this pathway. Um, and there were uh, data from, from Little Rock, from Christopher Hoyk, published uh, two years ago, I think, um, where he uh, sh showed that inhibiting um, this pathway uh, by using MEK inhibitors um, has some efficacy in patients that have RAS uh, or, or other activating mutations in this pathway. However, this is only around 20% response rate in these patients. So we were asking, um, are RAS RAF mutations uh, suitable for um, selecting um, treatment? So what we can see here is basically the uh, patients um, uh, oops, sorry. In the upper left corner here, um, where the red bars show that the pathway was activated, we used an immunohistochemistry approach looking for phosphorylation of ERK, the downstream kinase of the MEK kinase that was uh, suggested to be inhibited in this pathway. And what we saw is that patients with a BRAF mutation, with all kinds of BRAF mutations, relatively frequently do have activated activation of the respective pathway. However, patients with an NRAS uh, mutation present did not or did not significantly correlate with an activation of the pathway. So, uh, statistically, KRAS mutations showed activation of this pathway, but as you can see here, uh, also not in all uh, cases. 
So when we then looked in the, uh, in, into the um, single codon that was affected by the mutation and actually the single amino acid change, we found that only KRAS T12D showed a consistent uh, downstream activation of this pathway. So basically, maybe if that can, confer, uh, can be confirmed in, in larger numbers, um, could be a uh, selective marker for actually inhibiting um, MEK uh, kinase uh, downstream of the RAS uh, uh, mutation. And of course, but that's not surprising, it's kind of a the positive control, that all uh, BRAF V600E, the very well-known activating mutation, the BRAF gene, um, leads to a downstream activation of the kinase, and that this at least can be therapeutically successfully explored um, with all challenges that targeted therapy, uh, of course, um, is uh, implicated with, has just been nicely shown, uh, mentioned by Nikhil Manji in the uh, earlier talk. So KRAS T12D is consistently um, cons uh, associated with an activation of the downstream pathway as well as BRAF V600E. All other, others do not show a statistically significant correlation with the activation pattern here. So we thought, okay, if we can do this for one pathway, we can do this probably for many other pathways. So, of course, we don't have for signaling pathway activation, we don't have a whole genome sequencing type of approach where we can unbiased uh, look through all pathways. So we have to go to really to select um, known activation markers, biomarkers for an activation from pathways. So we picked um, uh, those who are given here. So for the MAP kinase, as I said, uh, phosphorylation of, um, of ERK. For the PFV AKT network, we have phosph uh, phosphorylation of AKT. Check stat, phosphorylation of uh, STAT3, including a nuclear expression of this, of this um, uh, phosphorylation, uh, phosphorylated um, protein. For the canonical nf b we used the inhibitor i b alpha as well as P65 in a nuclear expression. And for the, this very uh, important um, uh, so kind of signal um, integrator, CMYK, uh, which is very well known, uh, of course, in myeloma and, of course, from other diseases like lymphoma, we used the CMYK expression. So, um, so what we found in, in this, uh, using this approach is in different disease stages, as you can see here, that smoldering myeloma, according to our readout essay here, was mainly characterized by an activating of the canonical nf kappa p pathway with very low other activating uh, pathways, with one exception, some of the smoldering myeloma patients already had a um, MAP kinase pathway activation, and that was kind of mutually exclusive to the nf b activated, activated group. Um, the, the, in the newly diagnosed patient, it, it became already a little bit um, you know, more complicated. We see that while we maintain the background activation of nf b um, AKT and ERK are way more frequently activated compared to um, the, the other pathways. And when we go into the relapse refractory patient cohort here, as I said, heavily pretreated refractory to APIs and emits, we see that not only that we have multiple pathways activated at the same time, we see STAT3 and MIC coming up compared to the other two cohorts um, and it, uh, being maintained by an AKT and ERK um, kind of cluster here. Um, what is interesting to see is that we, uh, by this cluster analysis, all these um, groups here tend to cluster to some extent into an AKT ERK group and an nf kappa b group, which is of course very large in the smoldering myeloma and getting a little bit smaller in the, um, in the relapse refractory myeloma. And what we also see that, um, as I mentioned, STAT3 and MYC seem to kick in in an independent fashion, that's not uh, uh, independent of whether the, uh, the patients correspond to the so-called nf kappa b or ERK AKT cluster. Um, if you an analyze that in a statistical way, you also can see, as I just mentioned, a, uh, a, neg a negative correlation between ERK and nf b over all these uh, um, um, 
uh, patient groups, so smoldering, newly diagnosed, and relapsed refractory. And we see this kind of collaboration, so to say the positive correlation between ERG and AKT on one side, as well as STAT3 and MYC on the other side, STAT3 and MYC specifically or most strongly in the relapsed refractory cohort. Um, we then looked into patients, we had 34 patients with longitudinal samples, so basically um, at diagnosis and later at, uh, at a relapse uh, state, and we see that um, MYC and STAT3 both were statistically significantly increasing in terms of activation or expression. Um, in the other uh, pathways, this was more heterogeneous. heterogeneous. In terms of clinical relevance or clinical associations, we saw that um, STAT3 and MYC also are correlated or um, associated with a higher ISS stage, uh, namely ISS3 in this case, as you can see here. Um, and when we looked into, as I mentioned, this uh, clinical validation cohort uh, from our um, GMM GHG4 trial, um, we saw that STAT3 has a significant impact, the three expression of phosphorylation in this case, activation, has a, a, a clinical significant impact on progression-free survival as well as overall survival. And for MYC, we saw that um, this is also true for overall survival, less so for um, for progression free survival. And I'm happy to just mention that we just have now confirmed this uh, data that I have shown you on a, a set of 400, I think 20 patients from Little Rocks from the total therapy, um, from the total therapy um, program that BART has uh, started many years ago. And we can confirm this outcome with the same, with the same um, findings. And then, lastly, we said, okay, we don't have, unfortunately for most of these patients, many genetic data, but we associated the ones that we had, mainly RAS mutations and RAF mutations, as I have shown you previously. Um, and what we see is what we have seen previously, of course, that uh, KRAS is associated with ERG activation, but not with any other uh, of these uh, detected and assessed pathways here. However, in contrast, in the, in the newly diagnosed patients, in the refractory patients, we see that NRAS um, significantly here is associated with um, MYC uh, expression, high MYC activation, um, uh, also in contrast to the other pathways. So at least with this, with ras raf mutation, we see associations in the refractory patients with N, between NRAS and, um, and uh, MYC activation. Um, so we are now uh, starting a trial, or have started a trial, not only looking for mutated patients in BRAF genes and then um, inhibiting the downstream pathways, but also turning basically the wheel around and starting to look at which of the pathways here, AKT, AKT or McErk pathway, are activated according to that readout system, and then inhibiting this pathway, so predominantly activated, and then inhibiting this pathway either with a basically MEK inhibition or with AKT inhibition, and then on a second step look uh, and check why were these pathways activated, are there genetic determinants, why these pathways in this respective patient were activated, or uh, looking into the microenvironment, can we identify other reasons why a pathway in this respective pa patient might be overactivated or predominantly activated to the other pa pathways. Um, so to sum up uh, what I mentioned, um, MEK-ERG signaling and RAS-RAF mut muta mutations, I uh, showed you that KRAS G12D was the only RAS muta mutant, uh, mutation that was consistently associated with, with downstream activation of the pathway, as well as BRAF V600E. Um, KRAS on, in general was uh, um, more closely or more stringently associated with the downstream activation of the McErk pathway, but not exclusively. Um, and therefore, if you want to target um, signaling pathways, it might be a good idea to actually look into this before you uh, target the patient. In terms of profiling of the patients, we 
tend to see, I'm a little bit cautious, of course, because I, as I mentioned, this is not a whole genome-like approach or a whole pathway-like approach. It is picking uh, known validated biomarkers, in vitro validated biomarkers, um, but uh, as I said, looking at biomarkers. Um, and we tend to see, we think we see that there is kind of a kind of a dichotomy between an nf kappa b driven myeloma and then more like erg akt driven myeloma, whatever that means at that stage. Um, and we see clearly that nf kappa b is highly activated in the newly or early myeloma, smoldering myeloma, and uh, specifically STAT3 and MYC seem to kick in in refractory patients. Um, and also confirm a poor prognosis if they are already present at newly diagnosed stage in two absolutely independently treated cohorts. With this, I will end and, of course, will um, acknowledge all my collaborators who have contributed to this, to this work, uh, from Heidelberg, from the German Cancer Research Center, from the University Hospital there, and, of course, as I mentioned, Niels Weinhold, who already was mentioned today. Um, who was very instrumental in setting up this um, confirmation cohort from the Little Rock t Total Therapy uh, program. Thank you very much.